Good to go? <laughs> awesome. OK, so a little bit delayed. Sorry about that. Um, talk about target tooling for Eclipse. I'm Max Anderson. I work on the Eclipse tooling at Red Hat. Um, and uh, yeah, so just a quick thing about what is Docker. And you've probably heard about it a thousand times, but just give my angle on it. And one thing is, Docker allows you to package an application with all of its dependencies into a standardized unit for software development. It's a long statement up from Docker. And I kind of kind of heard that before. There's wars, there's devs, there's ears, there's jars, RPMs, all ways to package software. Um, but the thing is, Docker kind of changed this game because it becomes way, way easier uh, because you can actually package anything. Um, so the way it works is you have Docker running, and you can actually use all this existing functionality inside your Docker image or Docker container. So you can have your Debian, you can have your RPM or ear wars, and it can all talk together. Um, but instead of having, oh, this is targeting Java, this is targeting RHEL, this is targeting Debian, you can actually mix and match all the stuff you want. Um, yeah, and then you wire up and things are good. Um, so you could have a, like an app server in one place and a database in another, and they talk together. So what Docker is, gives is becomes a standardized unit for packaged stuff up. It gives a simple tool chain that there's a nice little command line tools you can use. Uh, it's portable, in quotes. It runs on uh, Linux natively. There is something that you can run on Mac. I'm running Mac here. And you can even run on Windows too. Um, but on Mac and Windows, you have to run it in a virtual machine, but it's kind of heightened for you. But the one thing that is super, super interesting is it's super fast. Like the, fa the way to start these containers are almost instant, as you'll see a few times in my talk. Um, so the Docker part you have is you have a Docker file that describes what your container is. This Docker file can look like this, saying from Wildfly, this is a, the application server from the MS community. Um, I want to add some configuration, so I'll take my own standalone XML and add to this uh, setup. And maybe I want to run, uh, install DDK9, so I run a yum install. Um, and then when this Docker image runs, I want to run the start. So this is very simplified. Just to say that's the Docker file, it has the simple instructions on how to run. Then that Docker file gets to be an image. So it just packages it up. And that is something you then can start and run in the container. And the cool thing is you can all do that locally, but you can also push it to a registry. So this image, I can either look up an existing image in a registry. For example, this wildfly is something that exists out in the cloud. And my image, I can actually also push up to the registry. And others can look it up, so therefore I can share this setup. Um, and then at the end, the container is actually running inside a daemon. So it's running into, I actually don't run Docker, I push it to the Docker daemon running on my machine. Um, well, you probably heard this a hundred times at a conference, but what this allows you to do is run these applications in isolation, and it's awesome for DevOps. So you can start up these containers instantly, run them, uh, they, you can just take them down, start them again somewhere else. But what I'm actually interested in is not so much the production side, but how it allows me as a developer to be faster on, you know, on my laptop. Um, uh, the stuff you can set up, you can use Docker as a way to run Jenkins builds. So instead of having a lot of compression on Jenkins, you basically just tell Jenkins, run this Docker container with all my compression in there, and you start it up and run. Um, but the biggest thing, I, the one I've used personally most is I can basically just get any Docker image from the cloud and run locally on my machine without having to know how to set it up. So I can run Postgres, Wildfly, MySQL, Rails, CentOS, um, MongoDB on this machine without even you know, having to, do how do I install this on a Mac? How do I install this on Windows? I just run them natively, natively in a Docker container on a Linux VM. OK, um, so Docker at Eclipse. There is a product called by the way, how many here use Eclipse? Okay. Um, so the product at Eclipse called Linux Tools. This is where Red Hat has been doing a lot of uh, 
and other companies that's doing uh, like GCC compilers, RPM tools, etc. They also right now host the Docker tools. But the Docker tools has nothing to do with GCC, etc. It's just that's where we could put it in without uh, immediately. Uh, we are considering uh, creating a container product at Eclipse, but right now it's at Linux tools. But it's not Linux specific, just so you know. Um, and the goal is that we wanted to make Docker accessible from Eclipse, both as a little tool to use in you know, DevOps, but even more as something we can use within, within inside Eclipse. Uh, for example, uh, my own product, Java Solo Studio and Java Tools, how can we run an app server in Docker as easy as simple as you can do it, run it locally, right? To do that, Eclipse needs to understand Docker. So that's what we wanted to get there. Um, one of the goals is we wanted to make, at least try and get there, that we, the tools can work with existing uh, Docker CLI. So just because we add a shiny UI on it, doesn't mean you, can use, you can't use the script. And vice versa, just because the script, well, sorry. Just because there's scripts doesn't mean that we limit the UI to what the, the script can do. Because we have a rich UI, we can actually make stuff easier. So that's what we try to do. So the idea is provide a value on top of the CLI. Um, and yeah, allow the reuse by other plugins, which I'll hopefully get to see. Um, so first, how to get started with Docker on your machine and with it? So the one I currently prefer to everyone is you go and install this thing called Docker Machine. Uh, uh, you can download it's Docker Machine. Docker at well, I have the URL at the end. Uh, what it allows you to do is run local any kind of Docker setup, and then you have this you know eval Docker Machine env dev basically just dumps out the settings for you. Um, so it says where is the Docker host, where is the certificate, where is the username, all that kind of thing. Uh, and the reason why that's important is because Eclipse will use that when you configure it. Um, and then here's just a tip I do is I go in in my ETC host and say Docker host is equal to the IP number that I get out from here. That is just so I don't have to remember it's 192167 something. It's just always Docker host. Um, so when you see me refer to Docker host, it's just whatever IP is just on my local machine here. And then you go to tools.org or via Eclipse Marketplace and get our tooling, and it has Docker tools in, embedded in already. Okay, so let's get started. And if you guys have questions, just raise hands and I'll answer them. Okay, let's go. So this is actually, I'm running GearBus Developer Studio here. Um, you can also do this in plain Eclipse if you want to. So anyway, uh, there is now, oh, there is in Eclipse now a thing called Docker tooling. And it gives you a Docker Explorer. And let's see if this actually works now. OK. So I'm running a very nightly build, and I had some problems last night. So if you use the default one, it will actually here, it will pick up those settings I talked about, the environment variables that are default. Um, but you can just go in and put your own connection information, and you make a connection to your Docker. And note, we can actually have multiple Dockers. So I can connect to a local one, I can connect to a remote machine, I can connect to a cloud. But I'm, I'm running local here. Um, yes, so you create a connection, and that's what I have here already prepared. Um, in here, I can browse the running conta the containers, and I'm just going to Spill for this view. Here we go. So here's my running containers, and right now there's nothing. What you saw before the long list of containers was all the ones I killed the other day. And here's the images I currently have on my machine. If I want to look up something in Docker Hub, I go full image, and I look for what haven't I done? V set and C. Oh, sorry. So here, set in C is a little tool for RSC. It doesn't really matter. But the point is, I can look up in Docker Hub. Here's different people who've done set in C. And if I say next, it starts. I can look up the tags and choose which version I have. And press finish, it'll pull down the image. I'm not going to do this here because I have a limited network. But 
that's the graphical UI in Eclipse to do Docker uh, lookup. Mind you, if you already know what you want to do, you can just go Max Anderson, set and see, and go finish. Right? You don't have to use the advanced UI, you can also just use the name in there. Okay, so once you have that in there, so let's say, for example, I'm into Wildfly. So there should be a few ones here, Gable's Wildfly. So that's the one I'm actually going to use here. Uh, where's my Wildfly? I can type here Wildfly. And it doesn't work often. Here we go. I'm just going to right click. Here's the image. I can say run. And this is now UI for Docker Run. Which image I'm running, I can give it a name, I can give it a command, doesn't matter. Here's the port. So you see Wildfly has a default exposed port 8080. Uh, if I don't do anything, it will map this to something local here, like 32769, which I don't like. So I'm just going to say just map it to a, the same port, and it will be 8080 to 8080. Uh, I can say next. I can mount a data volume, which I'll show later. Uh, set up environment variables, and then just go. And you'll see it's running Docker now here from the console. And up here in the container, it's now booting up. And you'll see I have the 8080s map, and I can now go right click, show map browser, and while that is uh, Wildfly running, right? Well, machine. And just to show the speed of this, if I go and do one more, run image. So this time, before I was 8080. Now I'm, I'm, I'm not doing it. Just pick some random port. Because if I don't, it will count me. So now I have two, darker, two Wildflies. I still have the, the one from before, and now I have one here. And you'll see it's still in the browser. Voila, right? You should notice there's now... See, it's, a, it's the same IP, but it's a different port number. Right? That's an example of, like, without much effort, I run Wildfly. This could be anything, which is awesome. Um, good, there's another thing in, in here besides this tree and the shortcut for adding stuff to Eclipse. We have a few other views. There's Docker, Im whoa, Docker images, and this gives a bit more detail. So if you run like Docker LS, this is what that corresponds to. And you can also do Docker containers, which is like Docker PS. Right? But I kind of prefer this little tree over here because then I can work with it to get it without having to fill up my UI with these two. So, and if you want details of this stuff, there's also the good old property view. There we go. If I click on the container, I can see all this information down here. So if you use running the Docker info, that's the kind of information you can get for the containers, for the images, etc. Okay. Uh, let's see. What else do we have? I can also, you know, so I'm surprised I can stop the container. I'm just going to stop these. I can. Oh, where is it? Oh, I was not supposed to stop it, but I'll do it again. Run the same container. Yeah, so just know this is the log. If there was input, like I had to ask something, I'll be able to, you know, ask stuff here. So if I go and do Fedora, run image. Here I'm just going to say I want to run bash. Come on. You can do this. OK, moving along. Not sure why it's not starting. <laughs> Anyway, the idea is that, that you can also have interactive input in that uh, console. OK. Um, so what, what, what I was doing here was just kind of using Docker containers out in the wild and, and get used to them. Next thing is actually using Docker for my own setup. 
And so here I need to write a Docker file. I need to build it. And if I want to have a setup of you know uh, containers, I need to link them together. Um, and I'm just going to do the first two parts, Docker file and build, and you'll see what I'm doing. So I have a project here. Oops. I have it here. Where is it? So this, this project, uh, which I had the source code to, I'll share it with you. It has a Docker file. And by the way, we don't have syntax highlighting stuff yet from for in here, but we will do have it. And um, what this does, it says from JBoss Wildfly a specific version. Oh, let me zoom this in, sorry. Uh, oops. Uh, that's better. Oh, that's maybe a bit big. <laughs> so anyway, it says from uh, Wildfly, the maintainer is my colleague. And then what I, what I tend to do here is to start a Wildfly on my machine that connects to a Postgres database. So how do I tell uh, Wildfly about the Postgres. So first of all, I need Wildfly to be able to connect to Postgres. So this stuff here is me taking the this jar, which is the Postgres Postgres driver, add it into Wildfly and set it up. I then go and say, hey, uh, the standalone XML that is in the default Wildfly, let me at least swap it out with the standalone XML I have on my machine, which is Right? And then I think this other thing is, OK, and now I have these two sets up. How do I get deployment into Docker? So if you are in a, a production mode kind of uh, mentality, you say, hey, I'm going to download a war from Maven and put it in here, or I'm going to build it from source and put it in here. What I'm trying to do is I can get a Docker machine, sorry, a wildfire running here, I can deploy it to you incrementally, incrementally. So I need a way to deploy stuff to, to, to Wildfly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, hey, the deployment folder is in Wildfly. Put that into the slash deployments. Um, and then mount that as a volume point. So it doesn't really matter. This is just a shortcut, so I don't have to remember that freaking long thing. It's just going to be slash deployments. And then say, hey, you, know, you can mount this volume uh, in the UI or in, in the tooling, which I'm going to do. And then I'm adding a, what else is here? Nothing else. This is just starting up the command, uh, Wildfly and that kind of thing. Right? So that's what this Docker file does. And OK, so let me just oops, back up two seconds. So you see, I have my local host, this is this machine. I have Eclipse. I have the Docker. I then want Eclipse to connect to Docker and set up a Postgres, a Wildfly, and then do all this linking I talked about. Right? Oops. And this is that I want Eclipse to put stuff into the deployment folder that that there's Wildfly inside Docker too. All right, so that's what I'm going to tip now, and we'll see if it works. Okay. So first of all, these were the instructions. I can now go and run as, oops, ah, where is my Docker file? Docker. Ah, man. Here. So. I will point, I don't, I don't know, something went wrong. I should be able to right click on Docker file, point to here, and just say run. And it will then run the build, build the Docker file. Um, again, I'm not going to do this here because I don't want to rely on the network kind of thing. But the result is it's going to build the Docker file, and it will create this thing called Wildfire Postgres. Right? So that's now. This is not, there we go. Yeah, this file gets into, builds the image that is wildfly. 
wildfire process. Right? Good. So, the next thing is the database. Why is this? Come on. Uh, there we go. Okay, first, get the database started. I'm going to create a Postgres called DB. It's going to run on port 5432. And I'm going to say, hey, this, the password for this database is secret. Good. Now I have the database running here. Now I want to start the wild play. I'm just going to call this Wildfly. Again, 8080-9999 is fine. Oh, did I have that running? I'm going to kill that one. Otherwise, it's going to overlap. Wildfly, run the image. All right, there you go. Good. Publish the port, 8080. I'm going to link this to the database. So the one I created before, I'm just going to call it dbdb. Remember, I exposed the deployment folder. So I'm going to edit that and say, hey, here's uh, the path, which I have here. This is the deployment folder. Say OK. So now there's a local file on my disk that will be on in this container. And then I'm going to say, hey, there's this Postgres database password. Oh. What does it say? Secret? Yeah. There we go. And I say, so when I start now, this should hopefully work. There we go. So here, I have now this application running, or this that right still running. All good. So the next thing is, how do I get deployments into this? So I've prepared. So if you know, if you know Eclipse, we we have support for JBoss and Wildfly, EAP, etc. So I create. Go away. I create a server. So this is a standard Wildfly uh, uh, server setup. Instead of localhost, it now says Docker host up here. And then on deployment, where it normally would go to my local install Docker, it I have set to it. So oh, let me just stop this thing. All right. Anyway. It's grayed out, but here, oh, you can't even see it. Awesome. Okay, on my screen, it's very clear. <laughs> there is a text field that has the path of where the deployment goes to, right? And you'll see, it says here, oh, you can almost see, but it says web ports 8080. So it, it think it's running locally, deploys locally, but instead, uh, and that's all good. Another thing is, I've said, the lifecycle of the service is, is externally managed, meaning the Eclipse tooling should not do the start of stuffing. It's letting Docker doing that. Now, as a server adapter, it will connect to Docker on the 8080 over there, and it will deploy to my local file system. So, and you'll see I have an application here deployed. When I publish that, whoops, it's going to sync to my local file system. And I'm just going to start this. So start this server means connect to doc. Just connect, see if it's there. If it's there, it's awesome. And I go right click, CO in Vepra. Right? So now this app is running on Docker Host 8080. 
And if I go now and change something in this, so let's say index HTML. Let's see, let's make this big so you can see it. So it says Java 1 ID bore, which was what it last night. So in here should be ID bore. So we're going to boost demo. I save it, it redeploys. I go back here. And oh, yes, it works. Right? So I use existing Cloud Eclipse and connect it to Docker. All is good. So one thing I haven't told is, how did the app server know about Postgres? Anyone remember or figured it out? I started Postgres, I started Wildfly, but how does Wildfly know about Postgres? And this is the, the magic of, of uh, the Docker, because Wildfly is just running inside Docker. It doesn't know anything. It doesn't know it's running inside Docker either. So if you know standalone XML, which is one of the files I said I set up in Docker file, there's a connection, which I assume you guys know. You can set up a data source. And you'll see it has stuff like env, the dollar curly braces, env.db does port 5432 TCP address, env Postgres username, env Postgres password. That's the, that's the magic source that makes Docker connect to a container. So when I started up Postgres under name DB, it just runs there. Then when I said start up Wildfly and say link that to DB, what it does is when it starts up Wildfly, it will inject every environment, every environment variable that is on the Postgres into Wildfly with the prefix db underscore. So that's, that's the magic. That's nothing else to it. Um, and this is what basically what allows us to have this set up. OK. That was a lot of stuff in, <laughs> in a few seconds. Um, oh, let me go back to that picture. Come on. Here we go. Yeah. So again, just to summarize, Eclipse connects to Docker Daemon. You have it there. I start up Postgres. It listens on port 5432. Wildfly started up. The deployment folder is mapped to a file system. Eclipse deployed to it. Then it and that means everything you normally can do in Eclipse with Wildfly, you can now do in this Docker container. And then this, this, this little last piece of magic was, how does Wildfly know about Docker? It's via this environment variable. That's the link from Wildfly up here. And then the last thing you can do with Eclipse oh, is I could, if I wanted to, connect Eclipse to this port 5432 and use the database tools to connect to, to the setup. Um, and I wanted to show you that now, but for some reason the Docker file, the, the JDMC drive I have is corrupt, so I can't connect. But basically, I'm just going to show you how it works. Again, database development. You create a connection to Postgres, and the only thing you do is hit, again, sorry it's for so small, but it basically says Docker host colon the port it will be running on. Just as normal tool will work, not any normal tool, and then if you had it working, then it will work, and you can connect to to uh, Postgres. Okay, and uh, let me skip that slide. I've done that enough. Okay, so again, what we want to do in so that this is the basic Eclipse tooling. What do we want to do next on? Um, First of all, we want to do, go beyond what the CLI can do. Uh, you saw a little bit of it. We have a Grapple UI for Docker Hub. We want to, the linking, and uh, we can show the links. We can uh, see the port and just open the web browser. We don't have to go Docker PS, find the thing. We, we know about it already. And the other one is you want to have server adapters. What I showed now was like manually, manually wiring it up. 
and I'm probably sure many will go like, what the fuck did he just do? But the idea is that we will, do, we will set that up for you, because these steps are pretty simple. We'll have a Docker server adapter that says, okay, you have a server and you run the Docker image and we can do all the deployment for you automatically. Uh, our, the Red Hat Linux side of the house is looking into using this to be able to build Red Hat, Red Hat binaries on any OS, whether that's uh, Mac or Ubuntu or uh, Windows. So imagine when you're running a build, instead of running locally, it will shift it up to the Docker container, run it there, and be able to run it. Okay, um, Eclipse Org feature, fu future, nothing much um, I, haven't, I have mentioned. Yeah, the Docker file editor we're gonna look in. We've talked about do doing Docker Compose, uh, but right now, the thing we're actually looking at is uh, adding support for OpenShift in the tooling, which will use the Docker tooling uh, in the same way, to allow you to not just do locally, but run open, uh, Docker in the past. Um, and this is actually, I just wanted to let you know, I can't demo this here because I, again, I had a network issue. Uh, what we're working on is have it, the, this Docker tooling available together with the OpenShift tooling and uh, a Vagrant image that runs OpenShift and Docker fully locally, all configured. You can do container development out of the box uh, on your any machine you have. Um, and then be able to push that locally. And then you say, hey, now I want to go that on-premise on uh, the remote cloud. And I just, that's currently what we're working on. I can't demo it. But that's something that's coming out in the next uh, few weeks and months. OK. That was kind of the quick story. <laughs> Any questions? All good? Raffle? You want to do the raffle? Sure. Okay, so that. Hey, what's the raffle? You have the details? 